what you're doing, Dana Covey. You were um, on it. Or have you, you worked with him? I was, he, no. Oh, for some I, reason I thought you did. I him. only spent four days with him at Lorne Michaels' house. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> of course, of course. You have the most craziest experiences. You don't know that story? No. Oh, then some people don't. You should have just said, and then we went to the White House. Because <laughs> that's absurd as well. <laughs> I Well, this one was the craziest because I was a, a stand-up comedian. How old were you? I was t 31. Okay. And I got picked to be on Saturday Night Live after being um, not picked for several years. <laughs> hey, you want to audition for Saturday Night Live? This is like 1983. Yeah, sure. Okay, you go on at midnight. Good. How long do you have? It's five minutes and you follow Sam Kennison. Perfect. <laughs> and SNL people will be there? Yeah. <laughs> so I that night it was death. Because Ken, Kennison, is, he levitated right. the room. And I get up there, you know these church ladies behind the bunch bowl? Isn't that special? And dead silence. So I did get the show. That's another story. But then I, Lauren Michael says, would you like to come out to, to Long Island? And, you know, would you hang out and stuff? And it's like a, it's like August. No, I said, okay. No one else was there except Whitney Brown and Chevy Chase. And um, then Lauren says, and I'm super nervous, never been on TV. Lauren says, Paul's coming to by tonight with Linda. You know, Paul, uh, Paul McCartney, you know, <laughs> like, fuck, a Beatles coming? I'm not even on television. <laughs> so I went and I answered the door. Oh my God. And there they were. It's a big mansion in Long Island. Lauren's off doing something. And Paul says, your face, it's going a bit funny <laughs> to me. <laughs> which I guess I just turned red yeah. or something. So then we're hanging out with them and I'm really nervous and I didn't want to say something stupid, you know? So I had the presence of mind. I go to myself, I'm going to mention uh, a song from one of Paul's solo albums. Okay. So he's talking to me and I go, uh, I always wanted to ask you about a lyric on the song. Um, it's a tug of war. And that was the name of the album. When you said in the tug of war in the in the chorus, you said one day we will stand on top of the mountain with the flag unfurled, but it won't be soon enough for me. What did you mean? And his face just dropped and his eyes got big. Well, I just saw a big old flag up there, you know, just floating around. So after that, he he knew I was a true fan. We we're just kind of connected. So okay. I'm meeting them for a while. Linda was adorable. She just met me casually. And my wife had not come with me on this trip because everything I'd ever done had failed. And she had a good job in L.A. <laughs> I said, I'll be back by Christmas. Everything, I always put the light out on her show. I thought I would look at 8H, Saturday Night Live, and just be, do you want to you want to switch the light, Dana, Dana, because you're the one who drove it into the fucking ditch. Church lady didn't work. And so I thought that was going to happen. So... Then we're just kind of hanging out, and then they come over. Linda comes over with Paul to me. Just met me, basically. Um, we're, we don't like that Paula's not here. We think she should be here. <laughs> that was, like, so cool. And then Linda goes, you want to play the song? So Paul had a song he'd never put on an album that he just recorded. Uh, I'm like, mm. oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so they put it in a disc, you know, and A. Whitney Brown's there, Chevy Chase, Lorne Michaels, Linda Paul, me. So right as the song's about to start, because now I've mentioned tug of war to Paul, he leans into me and says this quote, never will forget it. You know, sometimes, you know, when you're writing, you try so hard to live up to whatever, you end up ruining the fucker. <laughs> and then it starts. So he's looking at me. I'm going, hey, it's good, man. <laughs> do, 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 do. And it actually was a very great, very melodic, beautiful song. And then uh, after that, the marijuana came out. <laughs> the funny newspapers. Oh. <laughs> and I wasn't really a pot smoker at that time. But, a, but a beetle hands you a joint. You're going to take it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know. No, fuck you. And you shouldn't be doing that, you know. So then we just, they came over for four nights, getting stoned, drinking, oh God. and laughing. And so that was cool. That's crazy. Then I went about Saturday Night Live. Got the Emmy. <laughs> the cover of <laughs> Rolling Stone. <laughs> so in 96 or something, honey, there's a package. 
So I go, I open it up, and it's Flowers in the Dirt, one of his best mm -hmm. solo albums. He did it with Elvis Costello, I believe. And it's it's embossed on a big, it's like a big picture. And there's the record, Flowers in the Dirt. And a note from Paul says, this is for, you know, we're sending this out to a few of our grooviest friends.